hello everyone welcome to all today we are going to handle with the topic on sexual reproduction in flowering plants they are also called as angiospermic plants structure of a microsporangium microsporangium is consisting of four wall layers that is to outer side to inner side outer side the outermost layer is called as a epidermis it consisting of a barrel shaped cells helps in the protection next to epidermis endothelium layer will be there endothelium layer helps in the rupturing or dehiscence of microsporangium during the pollen grains releasing for fertilization next to endothelium middle layers will be there it consist of 3 to 4 layers and next to that tapetum will be there tapetum is a nutritive tissue helps in the development of pollen grains and this one is a one mark very very important question for your pu board examination next the central most portion of a microsporangium consisting of a few bundle of cells that will be compactly together called as a sporogenous tissue microsporangium structures in the these pictures you can see the different parts of a microsporangium picture a it is a schematic representation of a microsporangium it's just shown the layers of a microsporangium picture b you can see easily the different kinds of a layers of microsporangium that is the outermost layer epidermis the innermost layers endothelium and middle layer and last layer that is a innermost layer tapetum you can easily identify that each tapetum cells having a nucleus so that's why the tapetum is also known as a multi nucleated cells and the last picture is the ruptured microsporangium or dehiscent anther so here the pollen grains are going to release from the ruptured microsporangium mature anther consisting of a sporogenous cells these sporogenous cells are also called as a spore mother cells or a pollen mother cells pollen mother cells are also mentioned as a pmc and these cells are undergone for the meiosis and they are diploid in nature that will be gone for the reductional division to form a pollen tetrads pollen tetrads are haploid in nature so these pollen tetrads helps in the formation of a pollen grains that pollen tetrads will forms into a pollen grains that pollen grains involves in the fertilization after the dehiscence of a microsporangium or a rupturing of a pollen sac structure of a pollen grains pollen grains represent a male gametophyte that will helps in the production of a male gametes so pollen grains are 25 to 50 micrometer in diameter so usually pollen grains are very varies in their size color shape and design structure of a pollen grains pollen grains are consisting of a two major layers outer rough exan inner smooth intine exan consisting of a sporopollenin as a wall thickening and intine consisting of a pectocellulose as a wall thickening the one more reason will be there a small scale is present on the surface of a pollen grains that is called as a germ pore that germ pore will produce a germ tube through that germ tube only the gamete will transfer to the ovary pollen on maturity they divides into two cells 
a larger vegetative cell a smaller generative cell in angiosperm around 60% of a plant shed their pollen activity in a second cell stage or a third cell stage due to environmental changes in generative cell male gametes divides into two cells during the pollination they will liberated into pollen tube here in this picture you can see the vegetative cells and the generative cells in the pollen grains and in last picture i already told you that the gametes the male gametes are going to division and to form a two sperm cells that will be transferred through a pollen grains during pollination some pollen grains are also lead to the diseases like asthma and bronchitis example parthenium are also called as a congress plant and a carrot grasses are lead to a pollen allergies and second thing pollens are varies in their viability example in cereals it's around 30 minutes when it comes to a rosaceae leguminaceae and solanaceae it extended up to a one month usually due to the hard coat of a pollen grains pollen grains are stored in liquid nitrogen around minus 196 degrees celsius these process are also called as a cryo preservation process not only due to the hard surface they were not stored in a liquid and nitrogen due to their viability also they are stored in a cryo preservation condition and second thing so due to the rich dietary factor so they are used to a athletes and a race horses for enhanced performance and last point is they are also available in the form of syrup tablets for the consumption and summary of today's session today we discussed about the structure of a microsporangium and structure of a pollen grains allergies of a pollen at last the economic importance of a pollen grains thank thank you for everyone for your patience and the time and we'll be back in a next session